Hey, this is Scott, and today we're taking a look at the image quality of a 56mm f1.6 manual prime lens, the Lens Baby Velvet 56. This lens was a bit tricky to assess in terms of pure image quality because of the unique way it renders images, especially at wider apertures. As usual though, check the description for a link to download all of these files to see them for yourself at full resolution. We'll get into sharpness first, but as I said, this lens's performance in terms of sharpness are pretty unique. Wide open at 1.6 and even stopped it down all the way until about f4, you'll get a very dreamy and hazy look to your images, like a soft focus filter. Look in close though and you'll see that all of the details are there, they're just kind of glowing. Based on this, I'd say that the sharpness at the center is technically fairly good, even wide open, but out towards the edges all you see is a blur. As you stop down the aperture, the image will get gradually more clear, becoming totally clear around f5.6 with a very strong performance in terms of sharpness. If you look at the edges though, and not even the extreme edges, you will see quite a drop off in terms of sharpness. Or should I say it's more of a return to the kind of glow that you got wide open. You'll get this because of the lens's design, and so it's not a fault of the lens, more part of its appeal. You get something similar to a tilt shift effect in that the objects that would typically be in the plane of focus fall out of focus. Of course, with the tilt shift lens, you can control this a whole lot more. Here we have sort of a defocus vignette. This lens's second trick is its ability to do one to two macro. I found that it does this quite well actually, except the fact that you'll probably want to stop it down to at least about 5.6 to get really clear results. I'm personally not a huge fan of the dreamy look and I found myself shooting this lens mostly around 5.6 and coincidentally also a lot at close distances. Moving on, there's not any noticeable color fringing with this lens, even wide open, but again it's a little bit hard to really judge. It does have that hazy effect of course, but I don't see any purple or green fringing in those areas of high contrast. Vignetting is fairly strong, but it clears up at about the same pace as the dreamy effect does. Flare is definitely an issue when you're pointing it directly at the sun, but anything less than that and I've never had any problems. But again, with this level of an artistic lens, I get the feeling that a little bit of lens flare in these extreme situations isn't really going to bother most people. All in all, this lens performs very well, if you're looking for that effect that it has. If you're not looking for that effect, then this is simply not the lens for you. But if you are, it's a rare and unique find that does hold up quite well under all of its uniqueness. Be sure to check out my first video to see more about how this lens is built and designed, as well as my final review coming soon. Links to those, the full resolution files, and also the lens itself can be found in the video description, so be sure to take a look. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you like this video, subscribe to see more in the future, and as always, thank you for watching.